This is the new Range Rover, and it's a little bit like the Taj Mahal because it's so smooth, it's as though it's been built out of marble and it's Indian. Well, actually, Tata that owns Land Rover is Indian. This car was built in the United Kingdom. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk you around the exterior design, show you the inside, see how practical it is, take it for a drive, and of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the new Range Rover. So it's all very sophisticated looking. This one has been modified by its owner who's lent me this car, but you can't guess who it is. They might even show up a bit later in this video. Also, normally the car would say Range Rover there, but this one says urban, probably because this is the only place where the car will be driven in an urban environment. No one's really going to take their Range Rover off-roading, are they? One of the things that I really like about it is the way they've integrated the lights into these panels here. So you don't see the lights at all until they're actually activated. Really, really cool. What's well, not so cool though are the two shark fin aerials on the roof. Just looks odd. It's as though someone has capsized a catamaran on the top of the car. Anyway, let's move down the sides. Other wheel sizes start at 20 inches, rising to 23s, though these look slightly larger for some reason. Also, painted brake calipers. Yeah, that's not factory. Obviously, this car has got a wrap on it. I really like the colour of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Should Land Rover make a similar satin white available? The owner of this car has also fitted these running boards. Really handy when you get in, in and out of it and they've added some different color schemes to these bits of trim as well. One of the key features about the new Range Rover is how you don't have any trim here where the door meets the window. It's just so smooth and sleek. Oh, and of course, look, you've got poppy outed door handles. Go away. Yeah. Moving towards the front. It's quite obviously an urban, sorry, a Range Rover. Isn't it? That design is so familiar. Yeah, it just looks newer, cleaner than the previous generation car. And depending on which model you get, the design of the grille can change slightly. For instance, the SV looks like this. This new Range Rover definitely looks posher than the old car, but it has gone up in price. It starts from just over £99,000, rising to over £180,000 before options. Now, if you're thinking of changing cars, make sure you go to car wow. To do that, just click on the pop out banner up there for the link in the description below. You can check out the savings available on a wide range of new cars, and you can also sell your current car through CarWow. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. In fact, 83% of the people who sell their car through CarWow say they got the best price through CarWow. If you want to do all that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me CarWow and we will help you. Here on the inside, the Range Rover is a pretty blooming lovely place to sit, to tell you the truth. It's got a really nice clean design to it. Quality is good. There's a notable step up in quality over the previous generation car, though it's still not quite there compared to a Bentley Bentayga. Reason being, you've got some cheap materials here on the steering wheel and up here and some other bits and pieces about the place. However, it's very, very comfy. The chairs are lovely. You've got these armrests as well, so you feel like you're in the captain's seat. Also, storage is very good. Look, you've got loads of room under here and oh, what is the only left in this some chocomel and a couple of random fibers yeah then underneath here you have some spacious cup holders look in fact a bottle rattles around in there and then underneath here what's this wireless charging for your mobile phone but we've got a metallic sharpie probably for signing autographs a gucci set of sunglasses there and some more fibers what is it with the fibers? And look, we've got some USB charging port there as well. Now this trim is all quite shiny and because it's black plastic, it might actually scratch quite easily. So you've got to be careful with that. Then you have your gear selector there and this rotary dial, which controls your different driving modes. Moving on to the climate control, it's separate from the main infotainment screen, which is good. Though it is still a bit of a faff to use because you have to push for your seat and pull for your heating or your fan speed. Yeah, so that can be a bit of a faff when you're driving along and you have to look down to go, right, I need to do a push, do a pull, what, what setting am I on? Oh God, no, I wanted to turn the temperature down. Ah, oh, oh, come on, stop, 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 stop. Why do I stop it? Press or pull, then turn that, yeah, see what I mean? Anyway, infotainment system itself, generally pretty slick. It is the best system I've seen on any Jaguar Land Rover product. And you've got a curved screen as well, which should help reduce glare from the big display. Now it's quite easy to navigate through all the different functions and you've got haptic feedback. So it clicks when you press a button like that. It would be nice if there's actually some physical shortcut buttons, but it's still very, very easy to use. Though to be fair, most people are gonna hook up their phone and use that. And I would obviously use an Android phone, but the owner of this car is clearly an Apple person, aren't they? 
Moving on to the digital driver's display, the graphics are nice and crisp and everything's very clear. The buttons to control it though are a little bit of a faff and the menus aren't that intuitive. What I can't fault though is the driving position, so obviously being a posh car you have electrically adjustable steering wheel and loads of adjustment in the seats, which you control using these buttons here. Other things to note, you've got some big door bins, look, huge bottle, no problem at all. And you've got two glove boxes, so here's one down here. Some more things at the end is left, look, we've got um, some water. Is that a shiwi? It smells of diesel. It's weird. Anyway, we've got another glove box up here. Look, little one there. Hey! This is all very practical. Let's check out the boot on the new Range Rover. So, it has a classic Range Rover feature, which is a split tailgate, which makes it dead easy to slide things in and out. This actually belongs to the car's owner. They clearly like to box. Hmm. Anyway, big capacity here, 818 litres, which is slightly smaller, believe it or not, than a Mercedes GLS. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-up banner up there for the link in the description below. Now, if you want to fold down the rear seats because you need even more space for some reason, you just do it by pressing this button. Dead easy, and let's do that one as well. Ah, it's relaxing, although, the motor mechanism sounds like a laughing dolphin. Now, there is a bit of a ridge in the floor, so it does make it harder to slide things all the way to the front, as does the fact that this lower part of the tailgate sort of gets in your way, jumps you right in the bollocks. Anyhow, another issue is the low cover. Now, I like the way you remove it, it's quite slick, and it feels expensive, but there's not enough space underneath the false floor to store it when it's not in use. And not in a car video, that would mean that I would yeet this into the bushes. Considering the owner likes boxing, I don't think I will this time. Anyway, here's five or nine things about the new Range Rover. This shiny bit of trim down here may look pretty cool, but if the sun is in a certain position, then it just reflects the sun into your eyes. You don't have a physical button for the stop-start system, so if you want to disengage it, you have to use the infotainment screen and press that button there. Then if you're not in the right menu, you have to press that button there, and then you can disengage the stop-start. That's three presses instead of one. Land Rover claim they've taken the new Range Rover up market, and it's now on a level with the Bentley Bentayga. Tell you what's not on a level with the Bentley Bentayga, and that's the key. This is way cheaper than the Bentleys. You need to be key game, guys. You need to be game. The sunroof is a real faff to open. Well, it is on this particular car. So I've got the blind shut. I'm going to one press the sunroof, and it should open slightly. Okay, right. I'm going to press it again because I want it open the whole way. But now the roof just shut slightly. If I press it again, it's just opened a bit more. What's going on? How do you get it to open fully? There we go. You have to press and hold it. Is that, is that it? It's all a bit confusing. Why do they make it so difficult? Land Rover is always keen to point out that their cars are proper, capable off-roaders. Well, that being a case, they should come as standard with a spare wheel, because that's what you need if you're off-roading, right? Instead, this car doesn't, you just get tyre sealant goop. In fact, if you want a spare wheel on this car and you've got the 23-inch alloys, it's going to cost you over a grand extra. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. If you've got someone tall sat behind you and they're blocking your view at the rear view mirror, don't worry, that second annoying aerial on the roof of the car actually houses a camera, which then feeds into a screen which is hidden behind this glass. Look, all I have to do is flip this switch and now I can see another person blocking my view and I have no tech to see past them. Each of these headlights contain one million little mirrors and that allows you to have 16 different zones of light which the car can then control so you don't actually dazzle oncoming drivers because it can actually block out each zone independently as it wants to. Now a similar system on an Audi only has eight zones. 16 is twice as good as eight. There's lots of luxury features like soft close doors. Oh, I'm too posh to push. And acoustic glass to keep it nice and quiet inside. There's also sound cancelling technology, so various microphones around the car pick up unwanted noises. Then it plays opposite wavelength noises through the speakers to cancel those nasty noises out. If you have the autobiography model, you actually have speakers in the headrest for the ultimate quiet drive. 
All Range Rovers get rear wheel steering as standard, which can turn the back wheels by up to 7.3 degrees to make it more manoeuvrable to drive in town. More on that in a bit. The car uses the sat nav to work out when you're approaching a corner and automatically primes the suspension and active anti-roll bars to keep the car nice and flat and comfortable in the bends. Now let's talk about the engines. So there's two three-litre straight-six diesels, one with 300 horsepower and one with 350 horsepower, which is what this car has. Then there's a three-litre straight-six turbo petrol with 400 horsepower. Now you can get that engine with a plug-in hybrid system with two power outputs, either 440 horsepower or 510 horsepower. Then at the top of the range is a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 with 530 horsepower. That engine is actually sourced from BMW. Now all cars have an eight-speed automatic gearbox, We've also got four-wheel drive, though the car can run in two-wheel drive mode when you're just coasting to save fuel. Anyway, now let's drive it. Uh, no, let's not drive the car after what you did last time to my car. Oh. Oh. I'm going to drive the car or I'm going to supervise you and you can drive the car. What would you like? Uh, yeah, you, you come along then. Supervising. Can't be trusted. Right, and let's see what this Range Rover is like to drive. We're going to start off in town, and um, I've got a passenger with me. So I'm going to judge your car, and you can judge my driving. Okay. First off, it feels nice. It's like it's sitting on a sofa seat. I actually thought it would be terrible over bumps because of the 23-inch alloys you got on it, but... 24-inch alloys. 24? The car came standard with 23-inch alloys, but I've got 24s on it. Whew. Yeah, it, you don't notice that. The air suspension is really smooth and it's the kind of car you can definitely just drive one fingered like that, <laughs> isn't it? It's just, it's a luxury vehicle. And you get a good view out, don't you? Yeah, it's got a lovely big windscreen. Big mirrors, big back window, and it's quiet. Yeah, because you know it's got the deafening, it's got the sound deafening in the car. Is it, is that what they call it technically? Sound deafening. Sound deafening. Isn't it sound deadening? No, sound, sound deadening. De or sound deadening. Mate. Noise cancelling. <laughs> noise cancelling. There we go. Got it. So noise cancelling. So it is literally very, very quiet in the car. You can't hear anything. And the gearbox really smooth. Don't notice it changing gears. I don't actually notice that this is the diesel. It is a three litre diesel. Yeah, you got the wrong one, right? No, at least I got the three fifty, three fifty brake horsepower one. Gonna let you into a little secret here. He didn't know which one he had. We had to go on the government website, put in his registration and find out which model it was exactly. He had no idea of the trim level or which grade of diesel engine you can have. So don't pretend that you knew <laughs> what your car was. At least I got the better one. You got the better one. You really didn't know that you got the better one, did you? <laughs> yeah, this is so easy to drive. Do you get a lot of looks? Yeah, now it's wrapped. It's originally black and it was wrapped in yellow and now I've wrapped it sat in pearl white. Not going to lie, yellow was not a good choice. No? No, it didn't look right in yellow. Yellow is not the colour for a Range Rover. Layer cake. Yeah, I know layer cake. The but... Duke. Yeah, exactly. He was a drug dealer, mate. Do you, know, <laughs> you want to look like a drug dealer? I think if you haven't got tinted windows on a Range Rover, then it's like, it's like the Matt Watson spec. No tinted windows, no big wheels, no smoke lights. That is like your, your official white boy <laughs> Range Rover. Understated gentleman so you can have it look all like bling like you or you can have it very like just like boring me. like me okay boring right boring actually that is something we should come on to what do you think about this car as a whole is it exciting boring relaxing how would you describe it how does it compare to your other cars how long are you going to keep it for so i have a new car coming in january the aurus facelift right. so the chance that i'll probably keep this till january it is boring as I said, the seats are like a sofa. So when you're driving, you're doing a long drive, it's fantastic. But I've got no sound. There's no noise. There's no presence. As much as it's a huge car driving down the road. When you put your foot down, you, you actually think it could be an electric car. I think this is easier to drive in town than the Urus, just because you can see more. And there's something else that makes it easier to drive in town. Tell me. It's the turning circle. You know, you've got rear wheel steering, I right? I like that, yeah. What that means is this car can turn around in less than 11 meters. I think it's 10.95 is what they quote. Really? And that is a better turning circle than a little Volkswagen Golf. So I'm gonna test it out on a mini roundabout, which I can see coming up. No, no, you'll never do it on this one. I'll be fine, look, I'm just gonna like go round and round and round. Won't happen. You'll never pull it off here. Oh, it is tight, this is. And there's a high risk of me curbing your 23 inch alloy wheels. The 24s. Oh, I keep forgetting. 24s, I mean, is that even possible? Ah. Uh, Look at this. Look at this, dude. Look at this. Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! 
Oh, 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 oh. Are we all right there? Because we're in the middle of the round of it. Look, 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 Well done. Oh, well I done. so did it. You didn't think I'd get around there, did you? I didn't think you'd get around there, to be honest with you. It actually was better than I thought. That rear steering does make a big difference, for sure. That is nuts that it did that. I cannot believe it myself. I didn't think it would, but it just almost turns inside itself. It's crazy. Anyway, I want to do something else now. I want you to drive. Right, you're going to drive then. Okay. You go put the car down, can you get out? Pardon? I'm going to put the car down. Yeah, well, why do I need to get out? Uh, I'm going to just climb through. With my white interior. It'll be fine. Feet aren't that dirty. You look cross. Look, I won't touch on this. I promise not to touch. I just want to do this. See, look, no touching. There we are. Normal people get out and walk around. It actually seems quite roomy in here. It's not bad. Look, decent knee room. Headroom's good as well. Bloody hell, man. That's all fine. How short are you, mate? Can I put the seat back? Yeah, uh, yeah. there's loads of room. Hopefully there will still be room once you're in position. How tall are you? 6'2". So 6'2", driver in front, still got decent knee room. Foot space is good as well. Yeah, very roomy. Go on then, chauffeur, let's drive. Okay, now we're going to see what the Range Rover is like on the motorway. I want it to, like to be chauffeured in. Let's feel the punch of your engine. We're doing 50 mile an hour. There you go, 70. Yeah, that was smooth, that was. This car is blooming quite at speed, isn't it? Yeah. And in the back, it's really comfy. Sometimes when you move into the back of a car, because you're over the rear wheels, you can feel the bumps a bit more, but here, nah, it is nice. Got some big windows to look out of as well. Huge armrest, which feels expensive. Yeah, keep your eyes on the road. You're looking around what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, then under here, you've got some storage, you've got cup holders. Yeah, and I think it's through loading as well. How do I pull that down? How do you do this? Anyway, let's move on to the fact that I can recline these seats. Yeah, that's good. And I've got my own climate controls down here as well. And some USBs, you can charge your devices. And decent sized door bin, so there's practicality. And this is the sign of an expensive car. You have folder style pockets on the seat backs. Did you know that? That's how you check how posh a car is. What are the pockets like on the back of the front seats? That's motoring journalism right there. Motoring journalism 101. Still can't figure out. Ah, here we go. I got it. I got it. Don't look round. You're coming off here. There we go. Look, through loading. Problem solved. Last thing to do is to try this car on a twisty country road. Big old Range Rover. Surely going to struggle, especially with the Annie driving. So go on then. Let's pick up some pace, see what it does. Has it got a sports mode? No. Are you sure? Probably has. Of course it's got a blooming sports mode. This is 60 mile an hour, this road, you know that? Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, 40. You're driving like a grandmother. Come I've got on. a car in front of me, mate. What do you want me to do? Go over the top of it? Ah, oh, this is narrow. Whoa! <laughs> right, do you know what? I think I need to experience this for myself. I want to see what it feels like, Jan. So, pull over. There you go, sport mode. We're in sport now. Up. Oh, that's a not actually full sport mode either. How do you know? Don't worry, just keep your eye on the road. Right, like? look, watch the road. Let's pull over. This is scaring me now. This is it. This is it. Let's... <laughs> Come on, pull over. Where do you want us to pull over? Where, wherever you can, there's space there's there. Nowhere to pull over. I need to get on and review it. Come on. It's not me. You're going on like it's me. Eventually. Right then, Yanni. Sports mode. You don't just put the gearbox in sports, which is what you did. You turn this knob there. Right, so we're in sports mode now, and then I'm gonna put it into the gearbox as well. Now, what that's done is actually sharpened up the suspension, made it stiffer. You've also got anti-roll control. The anti-roll bars are active, so it'll stop the car leaning in the bends. Do you know what? It's all right, isn't it? I'm quite impressed by it. Here we go, this is a challenge though. This is a proper twisty. Whoa. Hopefully I'm not gonna understeer your car off the road into a bush. The brakes are all right. They're not grabby, they're quite smooth. I imagine they might overheat if you start going really quickly, then do lots of sudden stopping for tight bends. But yeah, look at that, and the pickup's good. It's not an Urus, is it, though, on a twisty road? Let's be honest. No. If it had some sound, you'd feel like you're going faster. <laughs> it's all right. Get the V8 version, and it would definitely be more fun. You wouldn't call it boring then. 
you drive the wife's car, she's got a V8 Defender. To tell you the truth, I think I'd rather have that than this. Same. Don't talk no one. No, only the entire internet. There is one last thing for me to do. Do you know what that is? No. What was the thing that annoyed you that I did in your Urus when I reviewed that? The thing I told you not to do. The thing that you told me not to do. Launch it. Launch it. Shall we launch it? This don't have launch. But can we do a 0 to 60 test? <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, let's do it. According to Land Rover, this version of the Range Rover should do 0 to 60 in? 5.8. 5.8 seconds. Let's see if we can do it. Although we are going uphill somewhat. I'm going to brake boost it. What time did we get? 7.58. <laughs> That's slow. That is slow, isn't it? But we were going slightly uphill. So do you know what we need to do? We need an average. Let's go back down the hill, but you drive. Okay. Right, what we're going to do now is just, we found a flat, so we'll just use your time rather than mine. Go on, launch it. Come on. Come on. What's the specialist time again going to say? Come on. 7.8 as well. And that was on the flat. It is what it is. Your slow. Car's, your car is slow. <laughs> you definitely should have got the V8. One last go. You got all the brake boost there. That was better. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, that's better. That's better. 6.73. Okay, do you know what the difference was? What? I've got dynamic launch on the dashboard. Oh, you said it didn't have launch I control. No, and you... then I found it. Knobhead. Ah. Oh. There we go, but still, with dynamic launch, on the flat that was, it's that was still good. almost like a second off. Last thing to do then is a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Let's see how well the brakes stop in an emergency. Gone. 34 meters, that's actually pretty decent considering okay. how big it is. Yeah, yeah, that's all right, that is. Shame it didn't launch quite as quick as it should do, even with launch control engaged. Oh well. So then what's my final verdict on the new Range Rover? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you want a very luxurious feeling SUV, accept no substitute. Get yourself a Range Rover. Just go right ahead and buy it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. What do you think of my verdict? Let me know in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to get a car wow to find out how much your car is really worth. Thanks for watching.